Hi everybody, I'm Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni and the Widow Recklehouse. And this is probably going to be a short video, um, just an answer to a few viewers' questions. I have mentioned maybe a few times um, in some of my Chaplet of Divine Mercy videos uh, that you can use your hands instead of a rosary. And so I've had a few questions about that and I thought since there was interest that I would explain it. It's not my idea. <laughs> actually. Um, I got the idea from Scott Hahn uh, from a book that he wrote called um, Rome Sweet Home, I think it is. And I'll try to remember to tell you about the book at the end, and I'll definitely put down the um, link in the description. But anyway, he just mentioned that he does the rosary while he's out jogging and that, you know, God gave you 10 fingers, so that's just perfect. So I took that and just, you know, very easy transition, applied that to the chaplet. And um, so, I, I have rosaries every place because I love playing the chap, praying the chaplet, and I don't know necessarily where I'm going to be when that comes on on the radio because I pray with a group on the radio. Um, so I have like one in my car and one in various rooms and everything. So I don't do this with my fingers very much, but um, but actually, kind of surprisingly, the place that I do it with my fingers is in church <laughs> um, because you know, like while well, we're waiting for the church service to start and, and stuff, sometimes I like to just quietly pray the chaplet just, you know, in my head, not out loud. Um, and, you know, that just helps me to prepare and I might not make it through the entire thing, but um, I, I try. And so anyway, so I just wanted to show you really quickly how you can do that. And if you don't have a rosary at home, which since I'm talking mostly to Protestants, you probably don't, <laughs> this is just an easy way that God provided for us. So anyway, so the first part of the rosary where you cross yourself, or the first part of the um, chaplet where you cross yourself and then you say the ocean's prayer and um, the Lord's prayer, the Hail Mary, if you're saying that, or you can say come Holy Spirit or something. And then the Apostles Creed, which I really, really do recommend that you memorize. That's just like your doctrine lesson right there that you're repeating every time. Um, it takes a little bit to memorize, but it's definitely worth it. Um, so those you don't really need something to count because you just know the order of those things. But when you get to the parts where you say things over and over, which would be on the decades, or as Catholics say, the decades, um, when you get to these parts where you have the 10 beads in between the two bigger beads, might happen to be roses, but they don't, they're not usually. Um, this part is where you want to be able to count. And so what I do is whenever I would do what's called an Our Father bead, the big beads, um, I will take uh, Bill's wedding ring, and you could, if you have a wedding ring, great. If not, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it just helps me to count because you're gonna have five decades, okay, like this. You have the one that comes from here to here, and then you have the one from here to here. So that's two, three, four, and five, okay? So you have those five. So what I do is with one hand, I'm gonna just move my husband's wedding ring along my hand, along my fingers for each one of those decades. If you have a wedding ring that you could do, it's probably not gonna fit all the way down most of your fingers, just right here is fine. Or, you know, you might have something else um, that you wanna just put on your finger, a rubber band or something, or just, you know, just know which finger you're on. I don't think it's that hard. Um, but anyway, so the fingers for these little beads, the ones that I have here that are red, they're not always red, they're all different colors. Sometimes they're wood, sometimes they're even just knots in a rope, okay? Um, those are the ones that you need your fingers to count for. So we would, for the chaplet, we would say on the Our Father bead, we say, Eternal Father in whom, no, <laughs> I'm going blank. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Okay, the, and so you're not really doing anything for that except maybe moving the ring along if you're using a ring to count. Okay, but then on these ones is where you're going to use your fingers because you're going to say 10 times, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. So this is where you can use your fingers, okay? So you say, Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And you do that 10 times, all 10 fingers. And so it's just a really easy way to keep track of those prayers as you go through the decades. Again, when you get to the end, um, you don't need your fingers because you're going to say the three um, holy God, holy, holy immortal God. Oh my goodness, I can't think of it. I do this by myself all the time, but I get on, on to a recording and I forget it and I don't have it in front of me. Anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, or you can find out, you can do the pray with me. Um, but you do that on the metal of the rosary. So if you don't have a rosary, you just, just do it. You know, you just do it three times. And then the eternal God in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible. That's my favorite part. And then you say, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. And then amen in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so it's just that easy. So that's, that's all that is to it as far as using your fingers. It's just really easy to do. And so I can do it that way. Sometimes I do it that way in bed too. I often keep a rosary in bed with me um, because, you know, I lost my husband a little bit more than a year ago. And this, the chaplet has just been tremendous for helping me get through this time. And so sometimes I keep a rosary in bed with me so that I can just do the chaplet if I wake up in the middle of the night and I need something to help me go back to sleep. Um, you know, I don't think that Satan likes us praying, so he leaves us alone when we're praying and lets us fall asleep. Um, and it's just comforting and, and just, you know, putting myself before the Lord and asking for his mercy and that, that helps me to go to sleep. So I, I often have a rosary, but if I don't have a rosary in my bed, I can just use my fingers. Again, um, like Scott Hahn said, when you're out jogging, that would be a great time. Um, or just, you know, any place that you are, you don't have a rosary, that's a great way to use it. So I promised you that I would tell you about Scott Hahn's book, um, Rome Sweet Home. And let me share my screen with you so that you can actually see it. Um, this was a really good book that I read when I first started. Um, let's see if we can pull it up there. There we go. When I start, first started wanting to learn about Catholicism, and um, I'll share with you another time why I started doing that. But in short, um, I knew that I, I know a lot about a lot of denominations, and I thought that I knew about Catholicism, but I started realizing that I knew about Catholicism from Protestants who were against Catholics, and so I wanted to find out really about Catholicism myself. So this was an interesting book to read because Scott and Kimberly Hahn were militantly anti-Catholic, and they ended up converting to Catholicism. And so um, it's an interesting story of their journey. And just um, a little short preview here. Kimberly was the daughter of a pastor, a Protestant pastor. I can't remember which denomination. And she was a top seminary student. Um, Scott was also, he was a Presbyterian pastor. He was one of the top in his class, maybe even the top. Um, I believe he taught at a seminary, and again, both of them were militantly anti-Catholic. And so reading about their journey is really helpful in understanding Catholicism. Um, one of the reasons why I like this book is because I'm hearing it in my Protestant language. And because when you talk to Catholics, they use many of the same words that we do, um, but they but they mean different things by them. And so we misunderstand each other very easily. That was one of the things that I learned very quickly was that there are a lot of words that we think we're understanding what they're saying. And so we go, oh, that's bad. But when we find out what they really mean and you look in the dictionary, 
and that's that is you know one of the meanings of the words um and they were using it before as protestants by the way um when you when you understand the vocabulary then you go oh okay i understand and that's all great so that's one of the big problems and and it's the same problem going the other way too they misunderstand a lot of the things that we as protestants say and believe um and some of those mistakes are pretty funny as well as probably some of my mistakes are pretty funny um in my misunderstandings and everything so anyway if you want to check into Catholicism and learn about it so that you can know more about your brothers and sisters in the Lord, I really do recommend it. I think that it's a very good thing to do. And I'll leave the link for that book below. Um, yeah, it's a really good book. And it just talks about all their struggles and learning and everything. And um, you don't have to convert. If you read it, you can just read it for interest sake and for learning about um, learning about, like I said, another area of the faith. Okay, so anyway, I love you all. I hope that you'll try out using your, your little built-in rosary here and, and try out the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Um, I will also link my Pray With Me where I pray through it, showing you the beads and I have the words next to me so that you can look at that so that you can learn how to do the Chaplet yourself if you'd like. All right, I love you all. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.